Welcome to Manta, Ecuador, the largest city on the coast. Today we're discovering Huecas and Manta. Now, Huecas are typically traditional restaurants. They kind of roughly translate to hole in the wall, but they're very traditional. They have fantastic prices, but that doesn't mean they're just cheap eats. So you'll find people from all walks of life at Huecas. You'll find people in business suits. You'll find people who are construction workers. The whole point of a Hueca is that the food is so good, everyone wants to go. So my videos are gonna look a little bit different for the next little while, they're gonna sound a lot different. And that's because when I arrived in Manta, my camera broke. I am devastated, but the show must go on. There is no one in Manta who can fix cameras right now. So it is a lost business because everyone now has a phone. And so that's exactly what I'm using right now. Unfortunately, I don't have a mic and so it's gonna be tricky. There's gonna be a lot of wind and of course there's a lot of reggaeton playing in Ecuador. So we're gonna do our best, but the photo's gonna be the same. And I have a feeling Wake Us and Manta are gonna be really interesting. So this is called pata de burro, so it's a large snail. They also call it caracol, which means snail, churro, which is a small snail in Otavalo, and then also Viagra. All right, so I'm here in Manta at the Mercado de Mariscos, the seafood market, the fish market. It opens up at 5 a.m. and that is when it's the busiest because restaurants all up and down the coast a lot of them come here to get the daily catch. Now it's 10.30 a.m. so a lot of the restaurants have already gotten the prime cuts of seafood and now it's mostly just people coming in getting it for their home use. Now they say that Manta smells but let me tell you something. In this market it does not smell at all. This seafood is fresh. You can see clear eyes. We've got some albacore tuna, some camotillo, you've got some sardines here, shrimp, calamari, octopus, like anything you could want, it is here. And the sad thing is where we're staying, there's no kitchen, so we're just here to look. So I'm here at the market and just right on the outside there are a number of vendors and I'm having something very special. It's called ceviche de pinjagua or sardine ceviche. I first saw this in Pedernales but I wasn't able to eat it and so I'm so excited to eat it here because they are selling sardines like six feet away from me and then they're also selling this ceviche. So fantastic. This bowl right here is only $2.50. So in it we have the sardines and then we also have ground peanut, a peanut sauce, we've got mustard, we've got ketchup, lettuce, tomato, and then also they have avocado, which is not typical in all of Ecuador to have on your ceviche, but here on the coast they do it. The avocado here on the coast is sweeter, it looks bigger, but actually the avocado pit is very large, so I think you have less avocado, but bigger avocado, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm going to try it on its own before mixing it all together. Let me get to this. Now, ceviche in Ecuador comes in a sauce, so it comes like in that brine and that's where all of the flavor comes from. It doesn't taste fishy. It tastes briny and light like the ocean. You can tell that this is fresh. Now, there have been a couple times in the last few days of travel where I tried some fish and I did not like it. It tasted a little bit old. This is bright, light, fresh. It's so good. Now, it's time to mix it all together. Some people will tell you that putting ketchup and mustard in ceviche is disgusting. In Quito, I learned that the ketchup actually gives it a little bit of sweetness to the fish, gives a little bit of umami from the tomatoes. And also, I think it's just a personal preference, but that's how they do it here, so that's how we're eating it. How is it with the peanut butter, or the peanut? 
Now, this is not my first time having ceviche with mani in it, but in Hippie Hapa, which is known, it's famous for the Hippie Hapa style ceviche, they only use the peanut paste. Here we've got ground peanut and peanut paste. We mixed it together. Andreas just said it's such an interesting combination to have both types of peanuts, the ketchup, the mustard, and then the sardine flavor as well. Mm. Oh, it's good. Yeah. It's actually, I think, one of my favorite ceviches. This is ground peanut flavor with the sardine is so good. Even if you think you don't like sardines, I think you need to try it. These are not sardines from a can. They were fresh sardines caught this morning, brought in. Like it's like a taste of the ocean and the land, the peanuts, so good. All right, so now we're at Parque de Mariscos and it is just a hop, skip and a jump away from the Mercado. It's on Playa Los Esteros. And at one point, uh, there were only food carts that were on the beach because it was right next to the market. And then the region, the municipality decided, why don't we build some infrastructure here? Why don't we build some cabanas so that locals have somewhere nice to eat? And so this spot is a series of cabanas serving traditional Ecuadorian food from the coast, from Manta, from Manabi, different than what you'll see on other areas of the beach where they have like fusion and it's more expensive. This is really local traditional food. So we came to this area to go to the cabana La Corvina. Now it's called La Corvina, but we're actually here to eat camotillo, which is a fish in Ecuador that has a slightly orange color. We saw it at the market and it's orange because it eats so many shrimp. It's supposed to be delicious. We were hoping to eat it in Pedernales, in Bahia, in uh, San Jacinto, but we had heard from them that it was a little bit too small. It wasn't really great there. So we're a little bit down along the coast and hoping that we can get some camotillo here. It is Sunday afternoon and this place is busy. So full of locals, we have a view onto the beach and then this restaurant is really big. It has uh, a side facing the road, a side facing the beach. And then we came up top, beautiful breeze, it's fantastic. Camotillo is a fish in Ecuador that people really look for. While tuna is really popular, camotillo is not as popular, although you can get it. It's supposed to have a nice fresh flavor, firm flesh, and it's supposed to be fantastic to eat. I've never had it, this is my first time. And so there are so many different ways to eat it here. You could get it fried in cocado, so in coconut sauce. You could get it um, al ajillo, with garlic, with shrimp, with uh, seafood. You could get it steamed, so many different ways to get it. So we asked what is the most popular way and they said it is fried. So that's what we're getting. Gonna try some fried fish for lunch. It is $12, um, a little bit pricier, but actually to get a whole fish fried on the beach, pretty good. Okay, so I was initially surprised we didn't get more patacones or rice, but as Andrea said, it's all about the fish. I will tell you this, they did a very cool thing. They actually took the fish off the spine, so it's almost like fish chicharron. It's so much easier for the average person to take the fish off the bone. All right, so this is... Oh my God. <laughs> Andreas just said, oh my God, and I haven't even gotten to it. But this is so incredible how they actually just fillet it for you so you can go like this, and you have this giant piece. They cannot make it easier for you. I've never seen anyone do it, but it is brilliant. So we just asked for some ahi and lime because those things are crucial. I want to know what kind of ahi they have. Is it a bottle? Did they make it? Is it going to be good? But let's, in the meantime, just try a little piece of this fish because Andrea said it was so good. It looks like it's cooked so well. Super flaky. Mmm. is seasoned so well I mean we're getting some lime but it's actually seasoned super super well it is clean tasting almost buttery 
It's soft but crispy on the outside. The fry here is fantastic. I don't know how they fry it, what they do, but this is great. Now, I said before that Wakas are often inexpensive places, but inexpensive is relative. So you could get a tiny fish in another restaurant for $12. This is an entire giant fish with sides and it's perfectly cooked. So what's interesting about this is this has a really big, like you can see, a big spine. It's a sturdy fish. I think what's happening in the smaller areas along the coast is they can't get deep enough out to sea in their small boats. And so they're getting quite small camatillos. And here in Manta, they have the bigger shipping vessels. And in fact, we had someone tell us, you know, to wait to go to Manta, and they were right. But also the way they cook this here, so good. I don't even care about the little rice and patacones because the fish is so good. p.m. and that means it's time to have some pan de yuca. We are on Avenida 22 y Calle 13 and this is the downtown area. This place everyone knows as pan de yuca. However, its official name is Bocaditos de Maria Eugenia. We are going to try two things. So pan de yuca, I have talked about this so many times. Pan de yuca, yuca is one of my favorite things. In the afternoons, in the evenings, people are making these fresh. And when they are good, they are so good. Let's see what this one looks like. Mmm. Cheesy. Salty. These breads, the pan de yuca is so light, buttery. It is so, so good. Also, Bocaditos are like little bites of things. So here, they've got the pan de yuca. They've also got this. This is tortilla de maiz. And so it's like a corn and cheese tortilla. Bread. Bread, cake, that kind of thing. Um, they also have corviche. They, have, uh, they also have a tortilla that has fish in it. And then they also have yogurt. So pan de yuca and yogurt is a classic combination got this one with a little bit of mora or raspberry on it. Oh, good. Musical. It's like frozen yogurt. The texture of it is like it's frozen. It's super cold. Mmm. It's really good. But so good. They have a lot of different things, fantastic prices. You can get grilled seafood here, but really, we're here for the meat. So, a parrillada here for one person is $7.50. We're going to share it. And this place has been around for a long time and is known to have some fantastic food. 6 p.m., that means it's time for meat. We are at Las Parrillada del Hokai. It's in the Hokai neighborhood of Manta, right next to the football stadium. These guys have been here for more or less 12 years and they are known as one of the most traditional perilladas in all of Manta. What's interesting here is the prices are fantastic. We came for meat, they also have seafood, grilled seafood, and then on Sundays they have a totally different menu. So the cool thing about this place is when you come here, they don't just give you an amuse-bouche for free, they give you some, like a whole plate for free. So I am about to try cocolon for the first time. Now in most countries that have rice, there is this tradition in many of them that when you cook the rice at the bottom, there's the, all the crunchy bits, the crispy bits. A lot of people like me would just be like, eh, and throw that away but not so in places that have a rice culture. Instead, they savor that. That goes to the luckiest people. And so that today is us. We are the luckiest. So cocolon is the crunchy, crispy bits at the bottom. And here, what they do is they put a little bit of that menestra, that uh, lentil juice, and lentils on top. Mmm, crispy. It's just like a a thin layer of crispy rice or this delicious lentil sauce on top. It's so good. I think you should come here just for this. We haven't even tried anything yet. I'm gonna try some things that neither of us have had before. They do do a traditional kind of grilled meat where you can, you know, chicken, beef, 
pork, like all the different kinds of cuts. So we decided to go with a couple of cuts that we haven't had yet. All right, so this place has actually three dining rooms, three places to dine. We are sitting in what is like an open air dining room looking out onto the street. It's April, so it's quite warm. Also, it's a little bit loud with a lot of buses going by. You can also sit right out front on the quieter street. And then they also have a third dining room that has air conditioning. I wanted to sit outside. It's gonna be a little bit loud. Right, so we got two plates. The people are here so nice, they gave us more food than we ordered. So we've got longanese right here. This is a sausage with a little bit of steak. And then here we have cow udder with also, I think that might be, they said it's fish. We've got this fantastic parsley mayo salad and we've actually got rice to top. All right, so the first thing I'm going to try is this. This is cow udder. So uh, cow udder is an example of can someone cook because you really need to know what you're doing. You need to know how to clean it, to prepare it, to grill it properly. This, I keep asking Andreas, so I'm like, is it tender? Is it tender? He won't answer. Mm, it is tender. I don't know how to describe the flavor. It doesn't taste like beef. It doesn't taste like pork, it tastes like meat. Very mild taste. It doesn't taste like organ. Somebody gave it to you, you probably wouldn't know what it was, but you would think it was delicious. It just has this like charcoal flavor from the barbecue. It's so good. Mm. It's amazing. He did, so Andreas did not want to like give away the surprise that it was amazing. They also gave us what I think here is some albacore tuna. So on both plates, they gave us like the yapa. So the yapa is a little bit extra when you order. Now normally we only order one plate. We made a huge mistake, huge. We never ordered two plates. We thought, ah, let's get two different things. Now we have four different things. Plus minestra of lentils, plus minestra of beans, and a bunch of rice. We said, oh, I said to her, I'm like, oh, I'm Canadian, I don't eat a lot of rice. They still gave us a whole plate of rice. This charcoal flavor. I didn't know what I would think about, you know, we came for the meat. And I thought, I don't even know if fish needs to be on a grill. It needs to be on a grill. This is fantastic. Last thing I'm gonna show you is longanisa. So longanisa is a sausage. The art of curing salumi meats came over with the Spanish, although it changed quite a bit because obviously not the same kind of environment as Spain for curing meats, not the same kind of ingredients. This has achiote, which gives it its flavor, also pork. Now you'd think, wow, wait a minute, like Manabi, that's a coastal town, a coastal region. Why, you know, are you eating so much meat? That's actually also uh, one of the biggest producers of uh, livestock. So it's very common to have pork beef here. So this is a pork sausage. And they're very well known here for this longanisa. It's different than Morcia that you will get in the Andes, which has rice in it. No rice in this. Now, of course, because this is a Wicca, they make their own ahi. I'm gonna try a little bit of it first because I'm worried it's gonna be too hot. Oh, it's hot. Give me some of the Coca-Cola, it's hot. It's Give me the Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's hot, oh, it's hot. Mm. It's not spicy. It's actually kind of sweet. You get the, there's like peppery, but not spicy. You got achiote in here, which gives it its flavor. And it's not chewy. Like it's actually very well mixed. So much of this. I don't know how, we're gonna have to take a lot of this back with us because it's so good. I'm not even in here. There are a lot of restaurants in Manta where you can go for steak dinner, where you can spend a lot of money. But the, the Wakas are such a good place to go. So this cow udder for the whole plate was like 425, 450, and then this longanisa was five dollars. So all of this food for 950. Sometimes things just work out. So 
We had on our list to go to El Capitan Manta, which is supposed to have the best ensoboyado in the city. However, we couldn't find it. And then I remembered so many people had recommended Wachos to me. But on a Tuesday morning, for some reason, it's closed. And so yesterday, when we were looking for someone, anyone, to fix my camera, we actually saw in the corner there was this spot that was packed with people waiting to eat and ensoboyado. And so it turns out we were in that neighborhood and we thought, let's go there. So we are at a spot called Irresistible. It's on the corner. Right now it's 8.30 a.m. Again, this place is packed. It's turning over people. A lot of people are here. They only serve two things, one in Cebollado and two ceviche. Now, in Cebollado is a soup traditional to the coast. It's made with albacore tuna, and that's why it's called in Cebollado. You'll also find yuca in it. And it's all about having this rich, fish broth. My favorite so far has been in Guayaquil at El Paz Volador, but I have a feeling this is going to be really good too because Mensa is all about tuna. So this is in the Taki neighborhood on Avenida Once y Calle 13. Now the Taki neighborhood is interesting. During the earthquake, Mensa was severely affected. Most people died here. There are over 300 people and a lot of them from this neighborhood. Entire malls actually collapsed and so now it's six years later and they are just starting to begin to rebuild, reconstruct, and you can see lots of construction in the neighborhood. All right, so it's 8.30 a.m. and it was super quiet, peaceful here, and then the pharmacy next door decided we needed to have some reggaeton music. So don't have a mic, we're just gonna go with it. This is what the energy is like today. I hope you can hear me. So along with the bowl of ensoboyado, it is very typical to get uh, fried plantains, which are called chifle. They come in a bag like this, and so you just, you go like this. Then you open up the bag, and you put it in your soup. All right, we are ready to try it. Did not put in any ahi. I like to try it first without. Wow, this broth is very different than any other ensoboyado I've had. It's very rich, but not in a fish flavor, like onion, I think there's some garlic in there, like a rich, almost a lot of vegetables in this stock. Mmm, so the small bowl is $2.25, the large bowl, which is twice the size, is $2.75. There is lots of albacore tuna in this. If you're looking for a wake up, and you're not sure where to go, just go to a place that is packed. Never go to an empty place. Look for the place that's packed and you can't go wrong. Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.